There's a new mayor with new ideas, but the new ideas actually seem to be old ideas and bringing back rent control. But have you seen their proposal for rent control? It could be completely useless at those rates. Or would it be? Let's read the stitches on the fastball together and see if we can analyze this. Hi, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. And I've sold more than a thousand homes and I'm one of the state's top agents. Let me know if you have any real estate questions because I'm here to help. Now, keep in mind that rent control in Massachusetts is it's illegal. Massachusetts voters eliminated rent control throughout the state back in 1994. So Boston needs to first get Beacon Hill to approve this. But nonetheless, let's look at the proposed rent control that, again, keep in mind, has not been formalized yet or passed. The proposal would allow landlords to increase rent by 6% plus the consumer price index, which measures inflation. This could not exceed 10% in a year. Tenants would also be protected by a just cause eviction ordinance. Now, the current proposal also exempts all buildings opened in the last 15 years, as well as small owner-occupied properties, think like triple-decker houses. Now, the argument for it's, well, it's easy. Boston is one of the most expensive cities in America, and this would make rent, well, more reasonable. Okay. The argument against it is that rent control has been shown to decrease housing production in the future while discouraging upkeep and maintenance of controlled units. This is when someone from the no rent control camp might just point to those New York slums in the past. The side against it also points out that the number of units permitted in 2022 was the lowest number of units in nearly a decade. So this rent stabilization would actually only exacerbate the city's housing crisis moving forward. So why is this current proposal, well, useless? That's because over the last decade, rental prices have increased in the city by less than 10% per year. I went to Zumper.com to compile this data. I figured I'd use September data as, well, September 1st, the move-in date, tends to be our busiest in Boston. According to Zumper, on September 23rd, 2017, the average rent for a two-bedroom home in Boston was $2,625. They then show that on September 24th, 2022, the average rent was $3,500. So that means that in the five years, the rent has increased by $875. That would be the equivalent of 6.6% per year. That would make the current rent form of the proposed rent control absolutely useless. Well, maybe it was just the two bedrooms. The average rent for a three bedroom in September of 2017 was $3,000 compared to $3,495 in September of 2022. That's a 16.5% increase over those five years, or 3.3% per year. And just as a quick side note, fun fact, the U.S. household income grew from $61,372 in 2017 to $78,813 in 2022. That is a 28.4% increase over those five years, or a 5.7% increase per year over those five year period. But now, Let's read the stitches on this fastball and let's see what they're trying to do here. I know if this was me and I was sitting in the mayor's seat and wanted this passed, I'd do just this. Start at a high number that is absurd and really doesn't do anything. i then get all the legislatures on board and have them override the people's past vote. Going extremely conservative on my numbers for this program would be the only way that I'd actually stand a chance to get this passed. Once it's passed, that's when I could start decreasing these rates, then adding in the small investors as well as the buildings done in the last 15 years. That is why this rent control program isn't useless. It's only useless is in its current form, but only the initial gate that they need in order to get open where the floodwaters can come just rushing out. Now, if you're against rent control, then think of this as your Trojan horse. As you've heard, I've not given my opinion whether it is a positive or negative. I see the arguments from both sides and well, I'm just not willing to get into a political debate. I will say, however, that if your goal is to get prices down, then I have never seen this accomplished by lowering the amount of supply and that I can't point to a single instance in the past when price controls worked. Again, my name is Jeffrey Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I'm your guy. All of my contact information, it's in the description below, or you can reach me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Until next time.